videos. So, in the last month I've been doing some videos about how to shoot photos with your smartphone and I would say that today YouTube is almost full of those type of videos. But how does it actually feel to shoot photos only with the smartphone, leaving at home a professional camera? Let's find it out in this video. So basically the idea of this video comes from the fact that I thought, okay, so I've made videos giving and explaining tips about smartphone photography and that is more the theoretical part for all of you. But I thought how it is to actually apply those tips and so do the practical part. And so this is the base of this video, which is not gonna be a video only related to the quality of the smartphone photography, but in general of the whole experience. The starting point that we're gonna talk about in this video regards the portability. In fact, all this started when a few months ago I went to Austria uh, and I traveled around four different cities Graz, Vienna, Innsbruck and Salzburg, so lots of different places. And the big fact of these days was that it, that was a school trip and so it was a challenge you know to decide to bring the camera or the smartphone because I wanted to take some photos there but I didn't want it the huge thing of the camera because it's not just the weight of it but it's even that you need to care about it and so for this reason I've decided in that situation to just bring the smartphone pretty simple pretty easy pretty light to have and so you don't need a backpack you don't need something to bring for example the camera which is bigger and especially if you don't have the pressure to care about the camera because the smartphone is something that you already have that you already need to care about and instead the camera is something that you add to all the objects that you bring during a travel. But even though we have this sort of gain on the portability side, we already have here a sort of a cons. In fact, we are gonna bring just one device to take photos, but with it we are gonna, for example, book some tickets for a restaurant, museums, whatever you need. We are gonna use the map, send messages. And so all these things have a negative impact on the battery and so we need to bring for sure a power bank just to not run the risk that you're gonna run out of battery during the day. Now I would move the attention on a more technical part of this whole topic and I'm gonna talk about the real differences from a smartphone and a professional camera which are in my opinion the lenses and the focal length. With the professional cameras you have the body of the camera with a great sensor and for the focal length and lenses you can exchange all the lenses so you for example you can have a telephoto lens or maybe you can have a fixed lens and so it's a bit more different than from a single smartphone so on the smartphones you have more different sensors and each sensor has a different lens so a different focal length for example, in my case, I've been using the iPhone 14 Pro, which has three different cameras. The first one is a wide angle lens, so the 0.5x, which is 13 millimeters. After this, you have the main camera, which usually has the best quality among all the sensors. And on the iPhone 14 Pro, you have a 48 megapixel, which is a 24 millimeters that can become a true X at sort of a 48 millimeters and after you have the 77 millimeters which is a sort of a little zoom to talk about the actual experience by using this set of lenses and cameras on a smartphone i would go directly through some of the best images that i've taken throughout these days in austria let's start from a particular lens which is the ultra wide lens the 0.5 on the iPhone which is something that I would say that is a bit controversial and I say this just because I see lots of people that continuously use the ultra wide camera but the ultra wide camera is something that you need to use for some little specific scenarios for example let's take these photos in this case you need 
a camera which allows you to take a photo for example to the entire building when you are on the other side of the road and so you don't have lots of space between you and your subject another example is this one so this one was a stop of an underground train in Innsbruck and I was pretty near to the subject of this photo but with the wide angle lens you can still take your photo and a first photo that, that I want to talk about is this one. This one is pretty particular because I was in the center of the road and I managed to take the photo to the two buildings on the opposite of the roads. And in my opinion, this is the real point of the ultra wide camera that is to take photos from a particular and to create a particular point of view, which is something not pretty common with the other lenses. So, this is the real point. But apart from all this, in my opinion, the greatest sensor is the main camera. The main camera has on every single smartphone the greatest quality, so you can rely on it always, especially when you are, for example, during the dark. For example, this one is a photo that I drew during the night in Salzburg, if I'm not wrong. And you can still take photos, you can still take photos and not losing for example all the contrast and all the things is not perfect as a camera because the camera can face lots of more scenarios but still it can take some pretty good results other photos that i've taken with the main camera are for example this one which is not too far from the subject but still you get a pretty nice view and pretty nice composition and one thing that in my opinion is better of the main camera rather than the ultra wide camera is that with the ultra wide camera you're gonna get some distortion and in fact if we take back for example this photo as you can see especially in the angles we don't have the perfect proportions the real and natural proportions one other photo that I want to focus on is this one because in this case even though I was near to my subject I didn't want it to use for example the ultra wide lens but in this case the main camera or even the telephoto lens would have been nice because in this case you want to get a little detail of for example a building of a part of a building and another example is this one and now getting on the telephone in my opinion is perfect only in a few occasions this one was took for example from a bus i was just moving around the city on the bus um, and so i just in a few seconds pick up the phone and take this zoom in photo which gives you a pretty particular effect for example here with the bus on the lower part of the photo and this upper part of a church which appears to be pretty huge in this photo and this effect is given by the telephoto and so you need to use this telephoto for some little details and to create some deep effects in your photo and so the, the telephoto is perfect for this thing or in general just to zoom in to a thing that is not near to you before we talked about the 48 megapixel of the main camera and I don't want to dive extremely in this topic because I've already made a full video but in general you don't need to use whole pixels of the sensor but all these megapixels are useful for the 2x crop which is perfect in some situations and so if you want to learn something more about this topic you can just check out that video the following point of the video and it's almost the last one is about the editing of the photos because yeah even though we are shooting with the smartphones the photo editing is useful and in my opinion is great to have if you want to get as the, the best result as you can from your photo and especially if you are shooting in Apple Pro. For the device that I've been using to edit all these photos that you have seen I just used the iPhone or the iPad but the app that I've been using on it is Lightroom Mobile, the free version. I don't want to get especially into this process of editing these photos if you want I can make for example a video about it but in general the things that I've changed in these photos are pretty simple just for example a few corrections and a few adjustments on the light the shadows all those basic things in photos but especially on the colors because in my opinion the great thing about Lightroom Mobile is that it offers the chance to edit 
and to adjust all the colors and in my opinion this is the real thing that can change and that can express something more into a photo as you're gonna see now even though i should with the smartphone the, the result after the photo editing is pretty great because some photos were good yeah the starting point was good but with the photo editing you can really personalize and decide the look of your final photo so in my opinion i mean lightroom mobile for free is one of the best apps that i've been using to edit photos so yeah in my opinion you should use it you should use it and so it's time to take the conclusion the conclusion after all these all experience that i've tried to make this sort of test that i've tried to make and it's positive i enjoy taking photos with you so i would say that that that's all i mean if you have any particular questions you can just ask me in the comments and i will be there ready to reply to you so that's all for this one and yeah i, I will just leave you with this point that the smartphone the experience is great for one reason is that to use the smartphone you can just bring it out from your pocket and you're ready to go and the real thing about taking photos is not the device it's not having a professional camera or a smartphone but this the, the fact of taking photos that's the most important thing of photography which is not the technical the quality part but is the experience that you get once you're taking the photos so that's all for this one i will see you soon guys bye see you soon